Hi, I'm Derek from Fiber. I want to take a moment to show you how to winterize your Dash 4.2. First thing we want to do is evacuate all the water from the system um, as, or as much as possible before we do anything with the antifreeze. If you have the manifold option, there's a plug down the bottom, take that out. There is a plug on the far side of this stainless steel manifold, take that out as well. Um, also on the bottom of the pump, there's a plug, take that out. And then um, on the tanks, make sure your valves are open. Do you want all the water to drain out and out of here? And you want to leave these open for the winter. Um, on some trailers, depending on who did the plumbing or, or just even how the hose routing works, sometimes there can be water trapped in the bottom fitting because the hose goes up after the, the fitting out of the tank. In a case like that, I would suggest taking that uh, flange fitting off and dumping the water out of that fitting so that it doesn't fill with water and freeze over winter in case you would move it or something like that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to purge as much air, water as possible through the rinse system and the rinse pump. So you got to you have your your rinse source set to water, and you're going to just open, turn on your rinse your air diaphragm pump, turn the air on, just pull one of your handles to try to push as much water out as possible, so you, you're left with just air. So we'll do that now. So you can hear it cavitating. That's good. Start off. We know that we're sucking air now, so that we've got as much water out as we can. Now we're going to go put antifreeze in the, D in in the very left inductor of the D-tank. Um, I would suggest when you're winterizing to put eight gallons in, um, eight, uh, or some people just do two pails, two five-gallon pails. Um, at the factory, we winterize it in a lot less, but uh, when you're not sure of the process or don't do it all the time, then I would just put uh, eight gallons in should be enough. Okay, so after you've loaded your antifreeze in here, um, and the reason why we evacuated the water before as much as possible is just so it does not as diluted. And when there's stuff getting mixed in the lines, it just it pushes out as much water as possible. That's, that's the practice there. Um, so now what we're gonna do is gonna change the rinse source to pull out of this tank. So now our air diaphragm pump will be charged with this. Make sure we turn our air back on. So, so now it's primed with sprayer antifreeze. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go turn on all your different rinse functions that you would use. Um, you're gonna turn them on and until you have antifreeze coming out of them. So uh, if you've got the knife kit, you're gonna um, you're gonna just let it run a little bit until you know you got antifreeze coming out. This one's got two knife kits. Um, your agitate, um, you're gonna turn them on first. Do your uh, tank D first. I'll show you how to do this. So it didn't take very long for antifreeze to start coming out. Just push them down and do that. Okay, I'm gonna turn my agitate on also. So if there's any water trapped in that circuit, now we've got antifreeze through there. Okay, we're gonna run this knife. Shouldn't have to do it very long, just make sure. Yeah, we got antifreeze in there. Do the same thing here. Just run it a little bit. Get some antifreeze in there. Um, and then we're going to do this circuit as well. So you can see how it's pretty available. It came out just about right away. So, and we have one more agitate to do here for this inductor. So, looks good. Okay, so now all our rinse functions are up here. That's all done. Um, if you have additional chem pumps that have run product through them and stuff like that, what you're gonna wanna do is probably hook this rinser up um, to, hook this rinser up to that pump and then you can use it to push, push chemical through, plug that pump back into here um, and then you can just circulate antifreeze through there so that whole circuit as well gets, um, gets antifreeze in it. The last thing we should do too is also our hand sprayers. So we'll turn these on. I'll just spray in the tank D. 
So we have antifreeze coming out. So now we have antifreeze. Just like that. Okay, so a couple things left to do now that we've done all the rinse functions up there and the and the hose rinse and all that kind of stuff, the hand sprayer. Now you, what you want to do is you want to come along and you want to pull your handles a little bit so that you can hear or the rinse circuit down in these valves down here gets some antifreeze in them as well. So before we were always starting on tank D, we're going to do the opposite. That's going to be the last tank we do this time. We're going to pull the handles from H, S, A, and then D at the very end. Because when I open D, it's going to let the antifreeze into the manifold that's in there, and then we're going to not have enough to suck, suck into the valve. So we'll start on H. Okay, we'll do S. A. And now the last one we're going to do is D. And now we run out of antifreeze, but it should have stuff that's pushing through. So, so now you can hear the rinse pump, it's sucking through, and that should be done. So the last thing we want to do now is, because uh, we've drained the motor and the pump, always leave your master water on, um, and that should be it.